what is up guys i hope you are doing well i'm here as promised with the third deck of the new meta and this is the elves list you've all been seeing on ladder and have probably grown tired of already it is the machine gun waylay list so my version is very specific it has one goal and one goal only and that is to swarm the board with dead eye elves and to make use of that in your favor it also wants to get the waylay cards into the graveyard, get that back into your deck, and then use Simlas to get four of them at once. So I'm going to show you exactly how this works. I hope you guys enjoy this deck. So far, I'd say for the average player, this is the strongest deck currently in the meta. The Fire Swarm list is also doing really well, but it's not the most easiest to play, especially if you're not used to playing Syndicate. So uh, let me show you how this works. Firstly, when I refer to Alvin Dead Eyes, I'm referring to this card. Your leader ability already spawns three of them, so that's altogether nine points. You want to hold on to your leader ability until it's necessary, but what makes this leader ability really nice is the fact that you can always just commit a little bit. You don't have to use all of them at the same time. If you're a few points behind, you just use one leader charge or two leader charges and it gets you ahead when you need to. So I quite like that. The stratagem we're going to be using in this deck is the Saber. This will spawn two square tail new fights. These are just quite nice to help you fill up the board a little bit quicker. Remember in this deck, the more elves we have, the more we are rewarded. We are rewarded for swarming our board as much as possible. So let me show you the uh, the main way this list is set up. It revolves around a simple mechanic, which is the waylay mechanic. So what does waylay do? Waylays will damage an enemy unit by three and then spawn an Alvin Deadeye on a random row. So that's six points guaranteed. Now, the nice thing about waylay is that it has recently been changed because how it used to work is you had to kill a card and then you got the Alvin Dead Eye. So if you weren't able to kill something with three points, that's all the waylay did. Now it's absolutely guaranteed to give you six points. So we have two waylays in this deck. Now in round one, I prefer to have no waylays in my hand. The only card I want is Vana Dayen. What does Vana Dayen do? So Vana Dayen will move two cards from your hand to the bottom of your deck. You're going to pick the two worst cards that you don't want in your hand and you're going to move them to the bottom of your deck. Then Vana Dayen is going to replace those two cards with two waylays. So now you have two waylays in your deck and you have two waylays in your hand. Vana Dayen is also very nice because if he's on the board, whenever you play a waylay, this card will spawn an Alvin Deadeye in this row. So not only will waylay damage a guard by three, spawn an Alvin Deadeye in a random row, but Vana Dayen will also give you an Alvin Deadeye, making it nine points a turn. That's really nice. Now, that's not the only reason we play this. So after you've used Vana Dayen in round one, all your two waylays went to the graveyard. They're now sitting in your graveyard. Not only does this card give you some nice tempo to get ahead round one and, and give you round control, but the next thing we want to do is play Alyssa Henson. So Alyssa Henson is a mage. She's also a neutral card. She will shuffle a special card from your graveyard to your deck. If it was a bronze card, which Wele is, it will also shuffle an additional copy of that card. So if you use Alyssa after you played your two Weleys, and you select Wele, she will shuffle those two Weleys back into your deck. Now, this is where things get fun. You now have four bronze Weleys in your deck, not two. If you want to play Simlas now, what Simlas is going to do is, Simlas is going to play all four Weleys in one go. That's a lot of points. That's six times four, which is 24 points in one turn, along with Simlas making it 26 points. So you will play four waylays each for three points, and then you will have uh, four Alvin Dead Eyes on your side of the board, which is also crucial. Now you're going to end up swarming your whole board with Alvin Dead Eyes. Why are we looking to get a bunch of elves and Alvin Dead Eyes? Well, next up we have Vernus Hill, the next part of our machine gun. 
So Verdasil can either be played on the range road to spawn two Alvin Dead Eyes, but if you successfully pull off that combo I just showed you, you're gonna have so many cards on your board that you can't afford to play Verdasil in the range row. Instead, you're gonna get way more points by playing her in the melee row. Each allied Alvin Dead Eye will damage a random enemy unit by two. So that's gonna have all of these dead eyes on your board pinging random enemies with two points. That is why we call this a machine gun deck. Of course, you also have your leader ability. If you still have that left, you can use those as well to make more Alvin dead eyes. And that's pretty much how the machine gun works. So there's some other cards that are also going to benefit if you have a lot of elves on the board. One of that is Isengrim. Isengrim will boost all allied elves by one point. And whenever you play an elf, he will boost himself by one point. The other card is Yaven. Yaven will damage an enemy unit by the number of elves in this row. So if you have four elves in this row and you play Yaven, he will count as the fifth elf. And then you'll be able to damage an enemy by five points. Obviously the max is going to be nine points because you can only have nine cards on a row. Next up, we have Teruvial. Teruvial has also been buffed, and my gosh, is Teruvial not a great card? Teruvial is one of the best cards at the moment because everybody's playing Swarm decks. So, Teruvial normally on the melee row would damage the units on each end of an enemy row by two points. On the range row, she will damage all units on an enemy row by one point. But the new part of this, if you control an Alvin Deadeye, you'll use both abilities. So we will make sure we have at least one Alvin Deadeye on the board. Then she will not only damage the two cards on the end of a row by two points each, but she will damage all units on the enemy row by one, which is quite a lot of points. So Teruvial is definitely the woman of the hour. Eleren will come out of your deck if you have five or more elves on your side of the board. So she's a nice thinning card, you never want her in your hand. Next up, I included the other cards that were recently buffed, Etriel and Merluga. So Etriel is an elf, she damages an enemy unit by 3 points, but if you have Merluga on the board, she will damage it by 7 points instead. Merluga is a beast and will damage an enemy unit by 3 points, but if you decided to play Etriel first and still have it on the board, it will damage adjacent units by 3 as well. So it will damage three cards next to each other by three points, which is nine points of damage, which is insane. So I thought it was absolutely worth it to have these two cards in the deck as well. All right, next up we have the Mushy Truffle. So a lot of people don't like the Mushy Truffle in this deck. A lot of people do. I happen to like it, but the meta might change and you might want to swap it out for something else. Something you could go for is Heat Wave. Heat Wave is also a 10 provision card. And this is used more for tall removal. If you want to remove something tall, or if you want to remove an artifact like Feign Death, you can have Heat Wave. I, on the other hand, prefer the Mushy Truffle. So the Mushy Truffle will spawn and play a bonded unit from your starting deck. The bonded unit we have is the Vryhead Officer. This will damage an enemy unit by 2 points on the melee row. If you play it on the range row, it will boost an allied unit by 2 points. If it's bonded, meaning you have well, two of these on the board at the same time, it will use both abilities. So not only will you damage an enemy unit by two, you will also boost an allied unit by two. So this card will play for seven points. We therefore have two of them, and the Mushy Truffle will give us a third. It will also have the uh, order ability that will allow you to boost three adjacent units by two, uh, thereby protecting your elves later on. Okay, next up is a pretty strong card. It's Feign Death, an artifact. So this is easy enough to set up. Whenever you play an elf, it will trigger the next chapter. So at first it will spawn Vernaseal's Commando. Vernaseal's Commando is an elf, which will grow by one point every turn if you only have elves on the board. If you have Vernaseal on the board, which is this card, it doesn't matter if you have a card that isn't an elf, Verniseal's commando will still keep growing by one point every turn. Next up, if you play an elf, it will spawn two elven dead eyes in this row, which is nice. 
And if you play another elf, it will spawn and play a Wailing. This is a really nice card to play. I prefer to play it later on rather than earlier. But it depends what your goal in mind is. If you really need to secure round one, Feign Death will guarantee you that round. So, what do we have left? We have our Neuromancy to guarantee us the cards we need. We have our Waylays. We probably go over to the Bronzes now. So we've got the Alvin Swords Master. This will damage an enemy unit by one point every two turns. But if you play an Elf, it will decrease the cooldown by one. Meaning you can play this basically every turn. It depends how you order it. Then we have the Dobler Thunder Bowman. This damages an enemy unit by one for each row that separates it from this unit. So if you play this on the range row and you target an enemy that's also on the range row, that's going to be one, two, three rows away. So it's going to do three points of damage. Ideally, you want to get three points of damage to give it seven points altogether. Um, lastly, we have the Vriad Sapper and the Vriad Dragoon. The Vriad Sapper is just there in case the meta changes. It allows you to purify an allied unit, but if you have an elf, which you do, you will be able to purify any unit on the board instead. So in my mind, you can purify a defender on your opponent's side of the board. And then it's, let's say they're playing Kaltulus. You can just move Kaltulus into the range row afterwards with something like a Vriad Dragoon. You also have the option of moving your own cards if you wish to do so. And this card is just nice to have a little bit of extra control when you need it most. I hope you guys understand how this works. It's actually a really simple deck. It's very fun to play, very strong. I hope you guys enjoy it. I will be back with another deck guide in the near future. If you have any suggestions, let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to check it out. <sighs> well, starting starting the day off with a bang, I see Mata coming in with the sub My as pleasure. well. Thank you, Mata. Uh, you Mata to me. I'm gonna be back. That's perfectly fine, Redwick. Thanks again, I really appreciate it. Good song. Good song. Uh, supper. And dad joke of the day. Am I a, am I a father? How about a uh, Verna seal? Okay, so we start off on blue coin. Easy peasy, Alvin Swordmaster. People tend to get rid of Alvin Swordmaster quite a bit. They view it as a threat. I guess it makes sense. Carabalista, okay. Hmm. I pass on every tenth round. All right. I guess we'll start pinging away. Hmm. And bit quick, thanks for the follow. When's the move to Scotland? September. It is in September. Um, yeah, so we'll be going in September and, well, August probably, and exploring the place first. Rafart's Vengeance. So I'm seeing commitment. Just in time for the lovely weather. <laughs> Do you mean the snow by any chance? This is our land, Dwan. You're not welcome here. Rarely snow. You can use a saber to double proc the sword master on turn two. Hmm. I guess I could give it a shot. Hmm, sure. If it survives, I mean, it never does. Snow on the British Isles, pretty rare. Lots of rain. I mean, they are going for it. So. Damn. I guess I pass now. I 
haven't really committed yet, so I'm okay with Hainzelt and Vengeance being out. Bombardment. Also rather now than later, I'd say. Okay. That's fine, you can have the round. I mean, they're definitely afraid of a long round, that's clear. Nice. Did we solve the waterproof mascara problem? No, so I need to I need to buy makeup removal, essentially. Um I normally use those, but it didn't really feel necessary the last year. I just use normal skin cleansing cream. Baby oil's the thing for it. King Balahoon. What? Think again, King Balahoon. Lionheart, do you wear mascara by any chance? Do you hike? I love hiking so much. You're taking your dog to a kennel scout? <laughs> Okay, well, good luck. Say goodbye to the flu for me. For this pride. That's gonna hurt a little bit. I guess I probably want to kill some things at this point. I don't yet want to play the Fain Death. I want to keep it. Maybe I should play a Neuromancy into Merluga. Kill the three. No, no, yeah. Kill the three. And then we will play Etriel into the seven. What do you do on Saturday nights? Yeah, that's a good question. Are they trying to bleed little old me? Etriel, I choose you. Okay, at some point we're gonna have to hero pass if they keep pushing. Hmm. <laughs> Why is my stomach growling? <laughs> I'm gonna have to get some fruit. Okay. to terrorize my students with English exercises. <laughs> Bye and Caligon. I, I mean, I'm pretty sure we can just pass at some point here. 
Like, what are, what does your short round look like? Amphibious assault and your siege. Garart, maybe. Okay, so that's enough commitment for me to at least play another card. That's okay. I mean, we're still in a very good position. Alright. So, we've got Burnus here, we've got three leader charges, and we've got a Neuromancy. We'll play our uh, Feigned Death with that, so that's gonna be straightforward. Nice. Nice. Yeah, can't really get better than that, to be fair. I guess Vernus Seal is likely going to go into the melee row. Maybe I should play Feign Death on the melee row for now and see what happens. You stand no chance. Easy punk. I mean, Siege in a short round doesn't feel as strong as our hand. Viz. This is a cool deck. I'll give it to them, it's a cool deck. Killing Brotons on the other hand, that's probably something we should have been doing. Uh, hey Ospara. And Skell, how are you guys doing? Okay, so we get rid of Aileron. We're going first, so some of these cards are necessary. Uh, Isengun can go. Turuvil can go. Uh, okay, I'm not a huge fan of this hand. How are we feeling about Elves? I quite like Elves at the moment. I quite like it. Uh, Chickbog coming in with a resub. Thanks a lot, Chickbog. I appreciate it. Welcome back for your second month. Okay, so we shall begin with the Oven Swordsmaster. Yeah, this hand is a little bit too good for my liking. Also, we can't yet set up Banadai in, which isn't great. GG, Betray. GG. Tourney Joust. I'm considering more and more to get rid of the riot sappers. It's not doing anything for me at the moment. <sighs> it feels unnecessarily it feels unnecessary to play Fain Death right now. And thanks for the follow Valen uh Valentin. I'm likely gonna have to pass at seven cards to be fair. Cause this feels bad. Way too much commitment. Liking the content, thanks for helping. Ah, hey, I'm glad. I'm glad if it helps. Blightmaker. Okay. Guess we go for the double of Thana. Yeah, and then I am thinking of passing. Imported to decks. Yeah, hey, enjoy it. The goal is to get Vanaday in out round one. Get the whalers into the graveyard, shuffle them back with um, Alyssa, and they then play Simlas with um, four whalers. I mean, that's the goal, right? And then set up a Verna seal with all those whalers as well. It was the first deck that got me to pro a year ago.
Again, hand is excellent, but that's not always a good thing. At least we've got new music. That's nice. Uh, bronzes mod check. There's Jan Kalveit. Okay, I guess we want to set up some carryover ASAP. Got our carryover. Alyssa or Snowdrop? Uh, Alyssa. Alyssa. The goal is go pew pew, make full board, and then go more pew pew. Exactly, exactly. Imperial Diplomacy. Okay, they're gonna be taking it slow, I see. That's fine with us. Hammer Dried means nothing. Okay, a Neuromancy into Vanalain. This is our land, Dwan. You're not welcome here. Okay, good. So we should be able to get ahead with the next card. I'm almost sure they'll be passing at 7. If not, we shouldn't have a problem with catching up. And what I like about this leader ability, it gives us the opportunity to just sort of push a little bit for some extra points when we need it. It's not an all-in leader ability like double crosses. Coup de grâce. Does Vanna die and put to bottom? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's nice, but I'm gonna have to do this. Have no choice. Maybe should have done that in the rain. Ah, melee error. Mm. A highly curious case. Was the play there to hold away they may be in hand if you always wanted to play him? Morning cracker. I get what you're saying. Uh, that's not a horrible idea. Why machine instead of heat wave? Gives us more elves. There's not a lot of toll removal in the current meta yet. Nice. Okay, well, I mean, this is literally the perfect hand. They're just gonna heat wave this, most likely. You stand no chance. Yeah, holding some waylays for Vanna Dayin is not actually... No, you know what? No, because Alyssa only shuffles back two copies of a card. And unless I really want Vanna Dayan to sort of tempo, I don't think I need more than two. I think for me the goal is to shuffle back two and have four in my hand for Simnas. And that will fill my board with a lot of elves and it will make it really good for Verna Seal. If you want this deck, you can just take it here. What are you considering, my friend? What is it you're eyeing? No problem, no problem. Brathens. Your name, young man. The man should be cursed into an urge. Just a peek. Yeah, that's not the card you want. Definitely not the card you want. Dogs that bark seldom fight. Okay, so now we've got four waylays ready to go, so we're gonna ping away Brothens and then we're going to uh, do the next card as well. Whatever that might be. Uh, Verna Seal's Kamano is not at all a threat.
Okay, let's go. Train not ignorant. Remember to whom you speak. For the daisy of the valley! Aaron has shown us the way. For the daisy not of the valley! Not too shabby. So Verno is just gonna <laughs> empty that side of the board really quickly. Mage Torturer. Ah, let's see. We were not the ones to start this way. Uh, Demon, thanks for the follow. Wow, this feels good. <laughs> this feels really good. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, I want to get Verna on the melee uh, side of the board as quickly as possible. Arto Terranova. Into Simlas. Perfect. I will run out of board space, that's okay. I just need to make sure I sort of get everything set up the way I intend to have it set up. Okay. Severna would be next. Mm-hmm. Okay. Leader first? No, because the leader uh, means nothing to us. Compared to Isengrim and to Reveal. Arturius Vigo. Mage Torture. I need not spill blood to okay. suffer like never before. Three, four, five, six. Uh okay, how about a Neuromancy into Teruvial into Range Row? Nice. And then next we likely play Isengrim. Yeah, board space is a bit of a problem. It would have been nicer to be able to maybe get Mushi Truffle out earlier from now on. Um, that would be better, I think. Isengrim? Because this fills up unnecessary space. And then maybe if we see this coming, more leader charges earlier on isn't the worst idea. Opponent connection lost. Does Truffle block melee to Ruvial? Um, I don't think so. You think Heatwave is better? Mm, I don't think so. I don't think it is. The idea isn't to go into a long run 3 to be fair. Rage quits, probably. Uh, oh, the thing is you want to play these things earlier on. To get an early round 1 tempo board. Where you want as many elves as possible. Heatwave just... We don't want Heatwave in this deck. It's hardly worth doing. It's, it might be when the meta changes a little bit, but until then, there's just no reason to have it. 